Hi everyone, I'm Christy Forsyth with Clarity by Christy. I am a soul therapist and an intuitive that connects with the angelic energy, and I help the helpers, the healers, and the light bringers of this world to live their most magical life. We're going to dive into this week's energy, what you need to know about it, what messages there are for you, and how you can make the most of it. So this is really like the cheat code to the week, how you can best navigate the energy that is set up for the collective, set up for all of us this this week and how you can make the most of it. So we're going to talk about that now. I do want to acknowledge the fact that I am live on a Thursday instead of a Tuesday. That's a little bit different. I usually do my weekly reading on Tuesday. I Things got kind of interesting this week and um, a very short version of the story is that one of my kids got really sick and was in the hospital. He is on the mend, but I still appreciate any and all prayers that you guys want to send his way because he's still in the process of healing. But we're here and I thought about not doing this video, but I just like have gotten to this point where I really look forward to doing this myself, to connecting with all of you and to be being able to connect with the weekly energy and to deliver these messages. So Let's talk about what we have going on and how we can best navigate this week. It's an interesting energy. I definitely, I don't know if you guys felt that shift when we shifted out of Leo season and we shifted into Virgo season, there was very much a clear shift with that where all of a sudden there's this energy of us preparing to, well, I always say Virgo season is like get your shit together energy, right? Where we are starting to work in some more routine. We're starting to figure out what is it that I need to be my healthiest? What is it that I need to be at my best? What is it that I need to help me to live my best life in all areas of my life? And I really feel like this energy so supports that in this season that we're in right now. So we're working on that. And so I would pay attention to any ideas that are coming through for you right now. What do you need to bring into balance? What is it that you are feeling called to incorporate into your life? This is going to feel like a little bit of maybe a slowing down or maybe even starting to spend a little bit more time at home. Leo season for me is very much focused around fun and lightheartedness and just being playful and getting out there and making the most of summertime, right? So Virgo season really calls us to a situation where we start to just bring more things into balance. So notice where you're feeling called to do that and what you're feeling called to do. I also do feel like it kind of encourages us to do those things that are on our to-do list that we put off and we put off and we put off because we don't feel like doing them. And Virgo season is a really good time for us to do that. So whatever you're feeling called to work on this week, definitely start to work on that. Now, if you guys are in my membership, then you will, um, if you haven't watched the monthly reading, you're gonna to wanna to watch that because we're in a situation where the, the planet planets are, there are several planets in retrograde. We are preparing next week for Mercury to go into retrograde. This is a lot, it's, it's really starting to stack up and I have a full uh, description of all the planets that are in retrograde and how that's impacting us and what we need to know about that. But what I think is important for us to talk about today is the fact that Mercury retrograde is looming. So for those of you who aren't familiar with this energy, this tends to be the time where people start to go, what the heck is going on with the energy? Because something is off, you know, things have felt really hard or, you know, things just don't feel like they're going my way or things feel really challenging. And we're in the pre-shadow for that right now. So you might already find that you're experiencing that. And that I'll, I'll talk more in detail about that next week in the weekly reading, but you know, that tends to impact things like communication and technology and those types of things as well. But there's going to also be a big focus around relationships during this Mercury retrograde. So we are preparing for that. And so I think what's important to understand is that if there are things that you're wanting to get wrapped up, this is a really good time to do it. If, or if there are things that you're feeling called to get started on, this is going to be a better time to do it than after the ninth, which is when we start Mercury retrograde. So, you know, take care of those things that you know that you need to be doing, that you know that you need to get started on. It's going to allow you to begin to create a little bit of a momentum before the energy slows down with this Mercury retrograde. Now, I feel like 
it's really important to acknowledge this mixed energy that we have and it's so funny because the card that i pulled one of the cards that i pulled the first one is the ace of swords and it came out of the deck sideways and it's so perfect it's so perfect for what this energy is because the ace of swords for me is very connected with feeling like we have clarity and it's interesting because the energy that i'm feeling right now for this week is that we have clarity but we don't feel like we do okay so what i mean by that is I feel like there's a lot of uncertainty for us right now. We're feeling a lot of uncertainty. We might even be feeling scared by some of the changes that are happening around us or um, some of the things that aren't happening for us that we are wanting to have happen, things that aren't moving forward. So we might feel kind of uncertain about things or unclear about things or not really understanding why things are happening the way that they are. But when I connect with the energy, I also get the sense that if we really truly take the time to listen, we also do know, we do know the answer. In some ways, we have a certainty around it, we have a knowing around it, and that is our intuition telling us what the answer is or what we need to know about that. And I, I find that intuition can feel a little bit more uncertain in that way. You know, we, we can tend to minimize that or not listen to that because that doesn't come from the part of our brain that it doesn't come from the logical part of our brain. So we can tend to sometimes try to ignore that, or I think sometimes even we're taught to ignore our intuition. What I really want to encourage you to do is to lean into your intuition, to really listen to that. If you're feeling like you don't know the answer or you don't understand why this is happening or you don't understand what you need to do or... Um, you know, if there are just certain things that are happening in your life that feel uncertain, know that you know, know that you know the answer. And if you don't know the answer, know that you know the step, the next step that you need to take or know that you know that you're going to be shown what steps to take in the right timing. Okay, so it can feel a little jarring. I feel like we can feel a little off just because it, it it's like some things aren't going the way that we want them to necessarily but we have to trust we have to trust in the bigger picture we have to trust in the divine plan and this is a real test to allow for that if we can lean into that if we can kind of listen to that knowing because that knowing understands the divine plan and that knowing knows that everything that's happening for us is for our highest and best good. We just, it's our human. Our human gets frustrated with that. Our human gets annoyed with that because things aren't happening either the way that we want them to or it feels really confusing and we feel like we don't know the answer. The Ace of Swords showing up sideways says, you may feel like you don't know, but you know. You may feel like you don't have clarity, but you do. So I would encourage you to go within and take your time and really listen to that. That is going to be really, really helpful for you. I also feel like part of the issue is that some of this, we've been talking about difficult truth for a while, right? Some of this is connected to difficult truths. It's, you know, seeing things that we don't necessarily want to see. Maybe recognizing that somebody isn't who we thought that they were, but on some level, maybe we felt that. Or um, recognizing that something no longer aligns for us, even if it's something that part of us, probably our ego, still wants in our life, right? So it's just also about in recognizing that that is the truth, even if it is difficult for us to acknowledge or to accept, okay? And um, when when I have trouble with that, I just invite God into it and I say, please help me, please help me to understand this, please help me to um, accept this, and please show me the next steps that I need to take in order for me to be living my happiest and best life. So. I just invite that in and I always find that that comes in pretty quickly in some way, shape or form when I invite that in. Um, so yeah, a, a lot of things happening, I think right now and I think in, in the coming month that we don't necessarily like, but they are for our highest and best good. And I also think that there's room for lots of magic to be sprinkled into that. And certainly I see that here with the cards as well. So. I called this video something like creating peace through the uncertainty because I think that 
to bring this all together, that Virgo season, this opportunity to create more routine, to create more balance, to figure out what it is that we're needing to kind of bring ourselves, our homes, our lives into balance, that if we can listen to those things and we can incorporate those things into our day, into our routine, into our lives, that is going to be the antidote to that feeling of uncertainty or like that skin crawly feeling of, I don't know what's next. I don't know what to do. I don't know where this is going. I'm uncomfortable because I don't like the changes that are happening or the circumstances that are happening for me. So allowing ourselves to use this Virgo energy in that way to kind of bring ourselves back down to earth and back into balance. So let's take a look at the cards. So we have the eight of swords or the eight of wands in reverse. Now, when I pull this card, I feel really connected to this idea of, I still feel like there are opportunities that are coming in for us. A lot of times when the eight of wands is upright, that for me is about lots of opportunity or options heading our way. I see us kind of filtering the options is what I want to say. So taking a look at things and kind of like with each of these wands that's coming our way, taking a look at them and inspecting them and deciding, you know what, what's going to be best for me for the long term? What is going to work for me for my best life? And what is going to be most aligned? So not those things that in the moment might be helpful or I might enjoy or I might like, but those things that are really for the bigger vision for the long term. And so I see us really taking the things that are coming into our experience and inspecting them and deciding whether they fit or whether they don't and making decisions from there. Um, I still think that we're in a little bit of that energy of if it's not a hell yes, it's a no. So this is us like taking a look. Is it a hell yes? Is it not? And, and exploring that and really making good decisions for ourselves for the bigger picture and for the long term. We also have the four of pentacles. So I see us, this for me is that, that Virgo energy where it's like, all right, let me just slow down. Let me start to like bring some things into balance. Maybe I'm bringing my money into balance. Maybe I'm I'm figuring out a plan for my future that's going to that's going to be helpful to me. Maybe I'm going I'm reconnecting with my goals and deciding what what goals still connect for me, what goals don't and where I need to make adjustments and what steps I want to start taking in the direction of those goals. Um I see us really starting to think about a foundation for specifically I feel like the rest of this year, right? Like what do I want the last months of the year as we're wrapping up 2022 to look like and what do I need to do in order to create that for myself so definitely us starting to think about that stability right and and really wanting that really seeking that and so I think that things that come into our experience that aren't able to provide that aren't going to feel good and aren't going to feel right for us because again, we're making those, those decisions for the long term, not for like that moment, um, that quick moment of satisfaction. It's more like long term happiness energy. We also have the page of cups and this for me when I pulled it felt like an apology. So you may find that you are feeling called to apologize to someone in some way or to make something right that and notice what you're thinking about we've got a lot of planets in retrograde that is forcing us to think back to process the past to take a look at the past and reflect on things right so do i owe someone an apology and this might not by the way be you but if there are amends that you need to be making or if you are feeling called to just reach out to someone and say hey sorry you know i, I I, I I did this and I feel really bad about it and I just want you to know that that I'm really sorry or however you need to say that or want to say that or whatever it is that you feel called to say. So I feel like there's a reaching out that's happening, but this may also be happening to us, right? So I think that there are openings and opportunities for apologies to come our way as well. So um, you may find that somebody is coming probably from the past reconnecting and just saying hey listen I'm really sorry about this and I've been thinking about it it might not even be anything that you've even been thinking about but this person has been carrying it so I think that there's a lot of opportunity for healed 
relationships and healed energy before we head into this Mercury retrograde. So I really like that. The Ace of Pentacles, this for me is talking about, yes, um, you know, money coming in or um, a sense of stability and security and us working on that, us creating that. But I also feel like specifically that this is talking about this week, a focus on home. So you may find, um, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be Labor Day weekend, but you may find that you're feeling more called to stay in, to stay home, to um, focus on tasks around your home, that kind of stuff. And not necessarily even just this weekend, but I think through this entire Virgo season, I'm feeling that that energy of what do I need to do to make my home feel more like a sacred space, feel more comfortable, feel like it has a better energy flow, feel like I'm surrounded by more things that make me happy, that make me feel good, that that make the energy in my space feel good. So I see us really wanting to be home a little bit more, but also creating more of a balance within the home. Then we have the three of wands. So you know, this combined with the Ace of Pentacles and the Eight of Wands is saying to me that there are some positive things coming into our experience this week. That, that, that there are, um, this is, this card for me is all about like our ships coming in, right? Things that we have felt on an intuitive level coming in, we start to either see those things come in or see signs and evidence that those things are preparing to come into our experience. So, um, and, and right now I'm hearing fringe manifestations. So uh, this is like what I call them. I call them fringe manifestations. I'll try to explain this quickly. A fringe manifestation is when you're putting an energy out there for something that you want and you start to like see evidence that that's starting to manifest by things that are close to that coming into your experience, right? But they're, they're close but they're not quite it, right? So it's like you're getting warmer to the manifestation of the thing that you want, but it's not quite it, right? So you might see some some things coming in, but you look at that and you say, mm, that's, that's close, it, it, it's almost it, but it's not quite it. And I think that there is a message here in this for us to be really careful to not settle. I think that a lot of people will see these fringe manifestations and go, okay, close enough, that's good enough, but for the long term, that's not really going to serve us. So we really want to feel like, yep, this is really checking off so many of the things that I'm calling into my experience and it feels really right and I feel really good about that. So I see these coming in for us and it's giving us this opportunity with this eight of wands to really inspect that and, and see, you know, geez, this is something that I asked the universe for, but maybe it's not really what I want. Or um, this is something that I asked the universe for, but the universe delivered it in a way that's a little bit different than I expected. Let me put that signal back out to the universe. Let me ask that for that again, but maybe in a little bit of a different way. So we're kind of working on fine tuning the, the vision with things. So try not to get too upset by that because in my opinion, it's really exciting because it shows us that we're moving in that direction. Oh, sorry, I have like something in my contact and it's, I'm not winking at you guys, I promise. <laughs> um, so the last card that we have here is the Empress card. Beautiful, beautiful energy. If you guys know me at all, you know this is my favorite card in the deck. This is us stepping into that divine feminine energy. This is us giving birth to our dreams. This is us being a magnet for all of the things that we want to call into our experience. This is us connecting to our confidence, to our abundance. This is us knowing our value, knowing our worth and understanding that we don't have to chase the things that we want. We can simply choose to call them in by working on ourselves, by um, you know, doing that shadow work by bringing balance into our life by um, you making the most of this Virgo season energy where we are getting our lives in order, right? And the more that we focus on that, and the more that we focus on loving ourselves and um, finding that confidence, it creates a different signal. And I, I really feel like so many of us in the collective have been working on this. And I feel like there's going to feel like a shift a little bit this week where you're like, oh my gosh, my magnet is turning on. I'm starting to see evidence of the things that I am creating in my experience, the things that I'm calling in. I'm starting to see the evidence 
that that's possible, that it can come in and that it will come in. And again, I, I think it's really important to understand though, that we don't want to settle for something that's close, but not quite it. So we're working on finding that balance, creating that peace through this uncertain, but not really that uncertain energy, if that makes sense. So I hope that this all makes sense to you guys. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you again on Tuesday with that weekly reading, but I really wanted to connect and deliver these messages for you guys. Thank you so much. And I will see you soon with another video. Take care guys.